Jill Lublin authored the best-selling book, Get Noticed, Get Referred. <laughs> Sorry, can we start over? Jill Lublin authored the best-selling book, Get Noticed, Get Referrals, by McGraw-Hill. She is also the co-author of two other national best-selling books, Networking Magic, which rose to number one on the Barnes & Noble charts for three weeks, and Guerrilla Publicity, the PR Bible. Jill it hosts the TV program, Messages of Hope. She trained on stages with Tony Robbins, Richard Simmons, and Jack Canfield. Jill is a popular international speaker who teaches powerful publicity, networking, and how to be influential with techniques. As the CEO of the strategic consulting firm, Promising Promotion, Jill has trained companies in innovative techniques to improve bottom line results. In the past 20 years, she has worked with ABC, NBC, CBS, and other national media, and knows what media wants. Jill has been featured in the New York Times, Women's Day, Fortune Small Business, Inc., and Entrepreneur Magazine. And on ABC and NBC Radio and TV national affiliates, and teaches crash courses on publicity. Her website is www.jilllublin.com. Please give a warm welcome to Jill Lublin. Thank you. Thank you, Lynette. Well, I am just delighted to be here this morning, and I would like to know from you, who would like to be first choice in their industry? Would that be a good thing? First choice in your industry. Raise your hands. I want to see you. Because if not, well, maybe, <laughs> maybe we can have tea sometime. But I will tell you that being first choice in your industry is what helps people remember your name. And remembering your name gives you, and this is what PR does, is gives you visibility and credibility. Would that be a good thing? Would you like more exposure in the marketplace? And I only mean the good kind. That would be a good thing, right? So my intention and purpose today is to give you real specific focused PR advice. Because one of the things, having done this for more than, gosh, 24 years, and I'm a roamer, so I'm going to roam, is to help you each get more visibility in the marketplace to grow your business, to grow your audience, and to have people understand and know your name. All right? So would that be helpful? All right, great. So you know what I love, in, and I'm claiming it, is to be a messenger of messengers. And what I know is the people in this room are messengers. Is that true? And I, I hear it because I hear some of the things you've spoken about yourselves, about your business. And one of the things that messengers do is solve problems, right? They solve problems. You know, I have a friend, P.T. Barnum, and if he were alive today, he said it best, and that is a terrible thing happens without publicity. What? Nothing, exactly. <laughs> and so the point that we use publicity and why we use publicity is to grow your credibility in what? What was the other word? Visibility. Visibility. And to do it free. Because, you know, at my table, when we were doing the table topics, I heard people talking about publicity using uh, technology, using advertising, using other vehicles. But let me just say, publicity no matter what the economy do, is doing, get you ongoing visibility completely free because you're featured in radio, in television. You're featured in social media if you're using that. And you're creating a buzz. Who's my buzz girl? Where's my buzz girl? There you are. <laughs> I know, I saw her in the restaurant. I'm like, buzz? That's so great. That's what we're all about building, right? That's her name, buzz. I love that. So, you know, building buzz, literally, is what you want to do. So solving problems is really a key. And if I may, I want to go straight to something. Well, actually, that's me when I was eight. You, you all have these pictures, don't you? You know, the kind you go, oh, my God, if I'm going to show it. Thank you. I really appreciate that because I'm not quite proud of that picture. And whoever the photographer was, like, that's almost it's a wrong angle, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
And that's my brother, Jack. So I'm Jill and he's Jack. Can you believe my parents did that to me? Yes, Jack and Jill. And I know every nursery rhyme there is to know. But I also, I have to tell you, I was an incredibly shy little girl. Can anyone relate to this? And just incredibly shy. Anybody still feeling a little shy? Yeah. And you know, the truth is, what I've discovered over the years is that you need uh, a way to introduce yourself. You need a way to explain to people what you do. Not only that, but I came from an incredibly dysfunctional family. Does anybody relate to that? <laughs> I mean, when I, I actually went to law school for one year, and I quit after a year because the truth is I'm very creative, and I have a kind of butterfly mind, which makes me good at what I really. <laughs> But I have to tell you the truth. I met Dr. Timothy Leary when he was already 70, and I said to him, I guess I missed all the good stuff, you know. <laughs> but he was one of the most brilliant men I've ever met, and people had a really interesting perception of Dr. Leary, right, because of certain things in his life that he's done in his story. So one of the things when you create a story is that sometimes that story can follow you, but you also have to recreate your stories. And I think as we create different parts of our business, different parts of our message, that your message also needs to shift, and you need to shift and evolve your message as you evolve and shift. Can you get that? That's a key. I love that. So it is, um, I'm going to skip this one. What it really is is all about your message, all about your message. Do me a favor, write that word down, would you? Just take a moment. Write down the word message. And what are the first two letters of message? Me. Exactly. Isn't that interesting? The first two letters of message. How spell? Sage. Sage. So can we just together say those, that wor those two words? Can we? Yes, thank you. Me, sage. Me, sage. Would you repeat that? It's an affirmation for the morning. Me, sage. Just let that sink in for a minute, me sage. In the word what? Message. Isn't that interesting? Me sage in the word message. Wow. For me, that was eye-opening. And one of the things I think is really important is to come to what you do newly all the time, to see things new in what you teach, what you're working with people, and what you're putting out there, and check out your sageness in the word message. Now, who's an expert in the room? I'd like to see who's an expert. Raise your hand if you're an expert. What do you guys, chop liver over there? <laughs> experts, are you guys all experts in this room? Yes, you're all experts? I'm just checking, I'm, thank you, I'm just checking. All right, so experts solve what? Problems, absolutely. So here's the thing. Remember I told you about when you go out in the world, it's great to have, I call it a script. Why do I call it a script? Well, because I work in media, and what I know about media is they need a great message, and most media interviews, and uh, let me just say, it's one of the most powerful strategies for getting your business out there completely free. And one thing I know about media is most media interviews are four to six minutes long. Four to six minutes. I mean, I've had relationships that last longer than that. All right, that was a joke. Thank you. I'm glad you girls got it. <laughs> but the truth is, four to six minutes passes really fast, and having a great script, knowing what you're going to say, knowing how you're going to say it, and to who is really key. Now, where else do you think having a, a great script helps? Can anyone guess? Where else? In the elevator, absolutely. <laughs> And, and by the way, where are clients? In the elevator. How about networking events? These networking events, knowing what to say to people so that you don't feel like a deer in headlights or that someone is going, what do you do? And you're going, well, I don't know, or don't quite have the words. So here's a great formula for filling in a script. And I would do it this way. The problem today is and fill in that blank, those words, that phrase, the problem today is, so that other people can know what you're offering. The problem today. That's been very helpful for a script that works. Also, you guys have some handouts in the middle of the table, as well as one of the other purple ones. And if you don't have it, um, raise your hand, and maybe we can help you get handouts. So 
just FYI, because I want to draw your attention to what the media loves and hates, and then everyone have a little purple postcard and some information on my publicity course, which I'll mention at the end. You all have that? Anyone need it? Okay, so if you look at the 15 things the media hates and loves, right? Because when I wrote Guerrilla Publicity, here's what's interesting. I got to talk to media across the country, like CNN, the Wall Street Journal, Entrepreneur Magazine. And would these be good for your business to get in? Let me just see. Yes? Absolutely. And I'll tell you, they didn't agree about much. But what they did agree about was the fact that you need to give value and benefit when you're talking about your business. Give value and what? Benefit. Absolutely. What I love about the message formula is when you're filling in the blank, the problem today is, and really telling people what it is they need to pay attention to based on your message. Because who controls your message? You do. Absolutely, you do. And I'll tell you, when you go into a room full of people, because that's public relations, when you're getting media interviews, because that's public relations, what's great about publicity is it will drive clients to your business, prospects to your door, and frankly, make you more money. You know, the truth is we're in business to make money, aren't we? And what I know about publicity is it drives money, prospects, business, and referrals to you, which grows your business. So in your message, being clear about your message is a real key to success. And, and the problem formula helps you communicate your message so that other people can clearly hear you. Make sense? And, and keep it in five-year-old language. Because some people talk too big, too high, too wide, and people can't understand you. So one thing God has blessed me with is the ability to translate people's messages. And I, I consider myself a translator. Because people will say words to me, and I'm like, what does that mean? And how does it help me? you got to talk to people in what I call you language. Use you words. When you're talking... You notice I'm doing it right now? I'm talking to you, right? I'm talking to you. And so using you words really helps people with understanding your message. And then we have a script, or what I like to call replicatable systems that help you gain and create visibility ongoingly, right? And that makes, so that's really a key. You want to create visibility ongoingly. Publicity is the primary strategy to do that so that other people hear your message again and again. Because why, why are we in business, right? You want to make a difference? As far as I'm concerned, making a difference means having people know who you are, know what you do, and know what your business delivers. And doing it in a way that's, well, compelling, that's proud, that's excited, that's passionate. So let me also talk to you about some ways when you solve problems and you identify a problem, like I would say, the problem today is four out of five businesses will go out of business because they have no clue how to create publicity without spending a fortune, right? And then I'm just going to lay out the problem. So that's how that works. And then I want you to identify three solutions, like give people three ways to actually get their message heard. And that's what I'm going to do for you now, but you fill it in for what you do, whatever you do, whether you're helping people buy real estate or with astrological consultations or manage apartments or you're an artist who wants to teach people about creativity or, or how to get more in touch with their intuition or do their business, right? Whatever it is that your business is, you can help other people because that, to me, is why we're in business. And so if we create the problem today, here's what you do next. You fill in three solutions, three ways that other people can, well, fill in the blank. In other words, give people real things that they can do to, depending on whatever you do, fill in the blank. So what do I mean by that? So I would say the problem today is four out of five businesses will go out of business because they have no clue how to create publicity without spending a fortune. And I would say, this is my script, okay? I would say there are three guerrilla publicity things you can do to get more visibility in today's marketplace. Would you like to know what they are? Okay, good. The first way to get noticed is to create your ooh-ah factor. The second way 
is to create the I've heard of you somewhere syndrome. And the third way is to focus on networking magic and show up in your communities, like you're doing here, at least twice a month for name and face recognition, right? And so part of that, those are my what to do for publicity easy tips. You notice five-year-old language, simple ways to communicate. So I think that's really a key, is find simple ways to communicate your message. Now, what did I do in my script? Can anyone uh, tell me what did I do in my script? Let me know. Let me hear from you. What did I do? I repeated. Uh, I didn't repeat topics. But I also, I actually spoke, here's the thing, slowly and clearly. Because the truth is you all know your message, but we don't. You, you've all said your business, but we don't know you yet. Yeah, so that's a real key. What else did I do in my message? Thank you. Say again, I used you words. Absolutely, thank you. Absolutely, I used you, you words. What else did I do? Exactly. Thank you, Paul. So this is really a, what I call a default position that a lot of people that I've worked with over the years, I see them default to, I can help you with. Okay? We don't do that. We talk about you, Paul, and you, Susie, and why you, Lynette, should care about whatever it is I'm going to do for you. Right? It's not about what I do. So don't tell us what you're going to do for us. Tell us how you can solve and what you're going to do to solve problems. Like I was with a, um, a woman yesterday on a consulting call, and she is a stress expert. So she says to me, well, one of my solutions is to breathe. I said, great, breathe, that's nice. How long, how often, and what should we really do? So that's a real key. Now, I want to give you ways to tie your message in to topical events, like months of the year. So let me go through this with you, and that is every month of the year there's some great theme that many of you could tie your message to that maybe you hadn't thought about before. So let's go through this for a moment. In January, what's the themes? New year. New you. What's that? Resolutions. In fact, one of he goes, hey, I could do that. He's actually here in L.A., or in this is Orange County, I know, but he's in L.A. And he said, well, I can do that. And then he went and started creating a message about how to cr uh, the top three resolutions that you will break in the first three days of the new year. Isn't that a great message? Now, let me just ask you, do you think he's an expert in that? Because he actually isn't. But what he knows, because I taught him, is that if you tie your message to what's going on in the months of the year, you can actually create more visibility, more credibility. And by doing this, he got on the Dallas Morning News TV. Would that be good for your business? Yeah, absolutely, it'd be great for your business. He got on Good Day LA. Would that be good for your business? Yes, those are great morning TV shows, for those of you who don't know. And he was able to spread his message and get three other interviews with uh, other major markets to grow his business. And what I like to do, and I want you to do, is create what I like to call the I've heard of you somewhere syndrome. When you use the months of the year based on the themes of each month, that creates more visibility in the marketplace. And that's why I love this. It's so simple, and it's completely free. And remember, publicity drives more prospects, more referrals, it creates name recognition in the marketplace and makes you more, what's the M word? Money. Right? Who couldn't use that these days? It makes you more money. And I've seen it this again and again as a replicatable system to create visibility ongoingly. What's the themes for February? Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. It's all about love. But let me say that one of my clients is a relationship coach. And uh, one of the things she teaches is and helps people who get divorced raise their children with love, right? And so we did a story for Valentine's Day about how to fall out of love. And she got into three magazines, two newspapers, four radio shows. Would that be good to grow your business? <laughs> Absolutely. Use what I like to call everything you've got. So if we jump ahead and go to, like, let, let's say the month of May. What's in the month of May? 
Mother's Day. And then there's June, which is Father's Day, graduation, weddings. Then there's July. What's in July? Fourth of July. And I like to make this a little broader and say, what would you like to be free from? What would you like to be free from? Now, who in this room could fit into that theme as opposed to July 4th? Susie, thank you. Who else? What would you like to be free from? Susie, what would your theme be? Bills, thank you. Absolutely. Would you like to be free from bills? Who else has one for maybe July 4th? What do you have? From what? Campaigning? Yes, there you go. Okay, be free from campaigning. What else? Say again. Thank you. Would you like to be free from toxic relationships? That's, that's great, Toby. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. What else? Please. Oh, she's just waving. Yes, Paul. Computer viruses. Yes. So you see how we could, we could create this for everybody's business in every aspect of a business? Does that make sense? Okay, great. Then we've got, let's say, September, which is, in my opinion, harvesting your business. Right? What could you do to harvest your business? Who might have a theme for that in September? Harvesting business. Notice it's September, it's harvest, right? October, what's October? Halloween. Halloween, but instead of Halloween, I want you to shift that to what are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? Who's got a story for what are you afraid of? Who's got a story for that? Jill, what is yours? <laughs> computer viruses. Thank you, Paul, absolutely. You should be afraid of computer viruses. What do you have, Jill? But she'll make something up. Making bad, decisions. Making bad decisions. Thank you, Arlene, because what you do is perfect for that. Absolutely. What else? Who else? Please. What's your name again? Jane. Okay. Vulnerability. Vulnerability. What are you afraid of? Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. What else? Which one? Toby's exes. <laughs> All right, Kevin. I don't know if we're going to publicize that, but that's okay. <laughs> Jill. <laughs> your exes. <laughs> so what, what I want to do, though, is point out to you that every month of the year, there's something to promote. Now, October, for women in the room, what, what, is, what does the month of October represent? Well, there's actually another thing that we celebrate in October. What is it? Halloween. What is it? Boss's Day. Yes, and all these are good. There you go. That's what I was waiting for. Thank you, Yvette, right? Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Okay, so here's the deal. If somebody in your life has had breast cancer or you've had it, um, let me just say you can use it. And let me tell you about Lauren, who, uh, Lauren is one of my clients who is a, uh, well, she is a therapist, and she has a lot around how to deal with stress in stressful times, right? And we actually went out with this story in January, February, March, because it's a great story, how to deal with stress in stressful times. And then in March, I switched her story. She said, why are we switching the story? We're getting great publicity. We were averaging three interviews a week on radio. Two um, national magazines had been interested. She had great results. And she's like, why are we switching the story? I said, because... And here's the point. You have to create publicity in three, six, and nine-month increments. Three, six, and nine-month increments. That means I want you looking ahead and projecting ahead three, six, and nine months, looking to see what's next. So in March, it was time for October in terms of PR timing. And by switching her story in March, and let me just share with you her story, and that is Lauren was on her way to get a divorce, and five days before the day, the divorce court day, she got a call from her doctor telling her she, he, she had fourth stage breast cancer. Not exactly the kind of call you want from the doctor. And she, 17 surgeries later, yeah, yeah, she had pretty bad stuff that going on there. It was, I'm glad to tell you, doing great and living well and uh, recovering and still dealing with stuff, but she's smart enough to know that if she wanted to get her word out, she needed to get into action. And frankly, while she you know, was active and still okay. And so one of the things we did by switching her story in March, we were able to get her into Red Book Magazine. Would that be good for your business? Yeah, let me just share with you that Lauren, in Lauren's case, getting in Red Book Magazine grew her 
web uh, visitors by 65% in one month. Yeah, very outstanding. And on top of that, she was able to sell, she had an e-book at that time, not even quote unquote a real book. And you know, to me it doesn't matter. But what happened was she grew, uh, she actually was able to sell 25,000 e-books, 25,000 e-books at $9.99 a book, okay? You do the math. It was a good day for Lauren. And she got in Lifetime Television, and she got in the Denver Post. She lives in Denver. So one of the things I'm big on, and write this down, is be a celebrity in your own backyard. Be a celebrity in your own backyard. You want to be known where you live. So that's really a key. So you get it, right? Using the months of the year to create your story, and then creating what I like to call your ooh, ah factor. This is a highly technical term. All right, come on. I, I made it up, <laughs> and, you're, and I spelled it for you just in case you needed that. But your ooh-ah factor is what makes you distinct and different and unique. It's what makes you you. Like in Lauren's case, dealing with breast cancer, getting through it, the power of that, your own story. One of the women uh, who came to my course recently, she, is a, she had a, a stroke after, um, at the age of 62. And her husband, who she'd been married to for 30 years, left her. Yeah, we won't talk about him. But <laughs> I will tell you that she hadn't been talking about this story until she came into my life, where I'm really big about let's look at what's happening in your life, how you can use your life to be an inspiration to others, how you can use what's happened to you to help others. In fact, let me just share with you, yesterday I was on the phone with a guy named John. He owns a uh, remodeling company in Oregon. Oregon? Yeah, uh, excuse me, in Washington. And, you know, it's interesting because he's been helping people remodel their homes. Meanwhile, he lost his properties, lost his homes, lost everything, really. I mean, it's sad. It's a sad story. And by the way, many people have this story. Yeah, they do. And he said, you know what, Joe, I'm committed to helping other people who have this story know that, you know, there's life after foreclosure, <laughs> which, by the way, I think is a new story. That's even for you. Remember, I was talking to you at, at, uh, during our table, that even though she's in real estate, maybe we should talk about foreclosure. It might not be exactly what she talks about. And one of the things John and I are working on for his story is about using his personal story to help others. Okay, so it's going to drive business to his remodeling company. It's going to drive business to other places. That's an ooh-ah factor worth noting. So your own stories is what inspires people. And for me, that's what I'm all about, is using publicity to inspire others, to serve others, to give value, and what's the word, the B word? Benefit to others, right? And what I found is using your story is what matters. So here's mine. Well, let me just say before I do that, use everything you've got. Use everything you've what? Got. And that's the part I was telling you about the woman who um, had a stroke, right? And her husband leaves her. So we talk about that. We talk about the things that are vulnerable to you. We talk about the things that maybe you don't want to talk about. And then using everything you've got means using your uh, ethnicity, your religion. Like yesterday, I was on the phone with a gentleman. He, his wife wrote a book, and he said, well, you know, mostly we're in the Christian market. Well, Christian press is huge. So is alternative, or what I might call new age press. So is women's press. So is um, every ethnicity there is, there's some press for it, like Hispanic press. So one thing I'd like you to do is use what I like to call every thing you've got. Everything you've got, all, all about your own story. And here's my story. That's me when I actually fractured both ankles at once in multiple places. Thank you very much. Oh, great, Arlene. You can laugh. <laughs> Let me just say. You laugh at everything? Oh, good. <laughs> good audience member. No, that, so, you know, four months, I end, actually close to five months, I ended up in a wheelchair. And let me just say, learning lessons, um, who likes to do everything themselves? Anyone? Yeah, let me just share. When you're in a wheelchair, you can't do that anymore. So all of a sudden, I had to learn about asking for help and ask for a lot of it. I had to uh, learn how to, uh, you know, just be a, uh, shall I say, a team member. And uh, certainly couldn't do things on my own. I couldn't move. I couldn't move. 
Can you imagine not being able to move for five months? And so uh, I used this time to, for me, create, uh, Lynette, when she was introducing me, said, I have a TV show called Messages of Hope. And one of the things I realized is that there's been too much bad news. Would everyone agree about that? Too much bad news. And so I decided to create some good news. And I did a TV show called Messages of Hope, where I interview great people with hopeful stories. And, you know, does this have anything to do with my business? No. D yes? You think so? Oh, good. Well, everything does. That's right, Susie. Because you want to use everything you've got in every part of your business. And one thing I'll share with you is that that show um, has been consistent for me, and I tape it for 30 minutes every month, right? And, and then doing that show has led me to interview some great people, to have my heart full, to give back to the community. It's not a revenue-generating activity, but here's a couple things. I want you to think about, could you do your own show? Because I even heard in some of the introductions, you could do your own shows. You know, some of the guests, interior design, right? Intu intuition and how to use it, how to meditate. I mean, really simple things, but you could do quick, easy shows that give people real value and benefit based on what you're up to. And you know what? Here's the good news. It's completely free because you can use it in your marketplace. You can use it in your marketplace to get more results, right? And so speaking of marketplace, remember I said become a celebrity where? In your own backyard. And by the way, celebrity, I mean, I use this term, but again, I'm talking about publicity to drive your business, publicity to make you more known in your industry, to create the I've heard of you somewhere syndrome. And what I know is by doing that, you create name recognition, familiarity, and visibility, and that's powerful. So in my own industry and in my own backyard, I went to the Marin Independent Journal, where I live in Northern California, and I said, you know, the problem today is, does this sound familiar, my friends? Yeah, what is that? It's your script, right? The problem today is people have given up hope. And so I gave them some real solutions for hope. And then the Marin Independent Journal said, hey, you know what? That's a cool story. And here's what happens. First of all, sorry about this. It got a little smushy while I was on my way in. But check this out. Lynette, can I just ask you, how big is this article? Full page. Full pages. Actually, check it out. One and a half pages. One and a half pages. And who's up here? That would be me. I'm on what's called the masthead. Now, let me just say I hate this picture because I was still on painkillers, so shh, don't tell anyone. But nonetheless, Lynette, can I just ask you, what am I doing here? Uh, it looks like, looks like you're uh, pointing to uh, something you wrote, uh, credibility and visibility message. looks like you're like teaching or right. teaching. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I'm doing. I'm teaching actually my publicity course right here because they came in and filmed uh, and actually – took a photo of the course, which ended up in the middle of the article. Is that cool? But Lynette, can I just ask you, what was I talking to them about? Probably their message. The, I was actually talking to the media about messages of hope. Yeah. And what's in the middle right here? Uh, oh my God, every one of my books is right there in the middle because who controls your message? You do. You do. So when they came in, and by the way, when you get interviewed, go ahead and pass that around, please. When you get interviewed in the media, here's the thing I think is really powerful and hot. Stand next to a banner, you know, like let's say the Inside Edge gets covered. You want to stand next to an Inside Edge banner, right? You want to stand next to a banner of your company and your name, and you can get these made quickly. Like if you go to my uh, product table, where by the way I have about four books each, just FYI, but if you go to my product table, you'll see I have mini posters that's, that show different uh, celebrities I've been with. They're, they're on your postcard a little bit there too. Now, you know, I would, if there is a media person in here about to take a picture, I would go stand next to that. So I want you to create something for you, your business, that you could stand next to or get that immediately would create more name recognition, your company, your visibility, more for you. So I, I think that would really help some of you. And, you know, I, listen, I've worked with major celebrities that you've heard of, like John Asaroff from The Secret, and I helped him prepare for Larry King, or Marcy Shimoff, you might have heard of her. She wrote a book called Happy for No Reason. 
And, um, you know, the truth is she couldn't put together her stories in a way that were simple and soundbite-like. But uh, if I may, so Lynette, you saw this one and a half page article, right? And as you're looking at this, it's really about my TV show, but let me share with you that the pictures are what I actually do for a living. I have books, I have courses, right? Here's the cool thing. That one article drove nine sales for me that day it came out. Th you know, my publicity course is 997. That was a $9,000 day. Is that a good day? That's a good day, <laughs> exactly. That's a great day, but Audrey, Audrey, is that how you say it? Was I actually promoting my publicity course in that article? Would you guess that? No, what was I promoting? Who remembers? Uh, Messages of Hope, the TV show. Do you see how it keeps tying into each other? And I just think that's really powerful. So I've given you today a couple different things, the product, uh, the script, how to create the problem, to give three solutions, to tie in everything you do to months of the year, to use everything you've what? Got, right? Your story, to tell your story so that other people get it, and to keep utilizing your story to inspire others and to know that everything you do creates more recognition in the marketplace and drives people to you for more name recognition. And I think that's really a key. And let me open it up and take some questions and I'm gonna share some free resources with you for how to get visibility. Let me hear your questions, who's got them? Please. Yes. Okay, one of the things to do is go to your public access channel. So what is it here in, in the Irvine Orange County area? You, say again? Thank you, K-O-C-D, E, K-O-C-E, thank you. And it's called public access, whatever it is. It's, there's a certain number, like in Marin, it's 27, channel 27. It's different in each place. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Cha thank you, channel three. So they have a training program which tells you exactly how to get your show done. And um, it's a really boring orientation, but other than that, and don't quote me on that and don't send out this video. <laughs> other than that, if you can get through the orientation, you're good, you've got a show. Typically you can produce any show you want as long as it's not about sex or violence, okay? So, you know, that's, that's really the truth. You can do any show you want and they will typically approve it. So I love this strategy. It's completely free and you don't have to do one every week. You could do it once a month. And then getting guests is wonderful because it gives you an opportunity to invite people to have more visibility and to get more credibility in the marketplace. So that's, that's really how you do it. It's completely free. All your crew is free. And you get great name recognition. So, you know, Massage Envy, you know that franchise? So I'm a member of Massage Envy. They've taken my course and I walked into their um, uh, storefront and actually was getting my massage. And the receptionist looked at me and she goes, Jill, I've seen your show and she named the guest and she named what I had talked about. And I thought, oh, thank God somebody watches the show, right? <laughs> and that's called the I've heard of you somewhere syndrome. And you know what else I found out? That my show reaches 40,000 homes. So immediately you can say, now not to say they're all watching it, but the fact that you can reach 40,000 people at once is truly a wonderful blessing for you, for others. Other questions? Please, Arlene. I love YouTube, and I do think it's a powerful publicity generator, and especially since Google bought it. Um, what's great, and for those of you who don't have a YouTube channel, I mean, that might be another way to get, we'll call it a TV show, or some quick clips. Like, what I'm going to start doing is uh, two minutes to publicity. And then I may actually cut it down to even 30 seconds. See, I'm big on fast and easy, right? Keep things fast and easy. Like when I wrote Guerrilla Publicity and Get Notice, Get Referrals, all my chapters are like three pages. Because I think, you know, I call it bathroom reading. I really do. I'll call my own book bathroom reading because I want you to be able to go in the restroom and literally read three pages and get some value quickly, right? and leave with some knowledge quickly. So I'm big on quick, simple sound bites yeah. and bite-sized chunks. I think that's really helpful. Okay, other questions? Is that Arlene? Oh, please, Buzz. Yeah. 
I would actually, you know, make it more dynamic because it's video. So what I would do is, is do um, maybe something about how to match your style with jewelry. Um, there is a, like, go to YouTube, press the button, and actually send it to them. And Jill, you might... Yeah, Jill's an expert in, in some of this, so if you want, please take a moment after and talk to her. She's great about this. But, but Buzz, for you, what I would do is, is talk about um, how to make your jewelry make you more beautiful and give people great tips for what jewelry to wear that would make them look better. So again, having things be uh, wonderful for you, the listener. Does that make sense? Okay, other questions. How can I help you? I heard somebody ask a question earlier, but other questions? Okay, great. Oh, Pat, Robbie, are you? No, okay. <laughs> no, just, just scratching your head, okay. Um, so the point about publicity, a couple things I want to uh, give you as, as more um, what I would call, what I like to call it the I've heard of you somewhere syndrome. What does that mean? If you notice on the screen, there are multiple places where you can send a four-sentence announcement that's completely free, really simple, and it gets your name out there again and again. So um, and it, what it does, in the daily newspaper, your business journal, there's a section called People or People in the News. Anyone seen this? You've probably seen it. Maybe you haven't submitted yourself. But I would like you to submit yourself. And if you're a member of the Chamber of Commerce, I'd like you to submit yourself every 60 days, every 60 days, a new announcement, perhaps a new person you just hired or an award you won or a program you went to. It could be anything. These are the places where you'll submit it to, plus an alumni magazine. So um, there's a woman who recently was with me. We actually wrote out the announcement. She submitted it to these places. Her alumni magazine, where she'd gone to university 30 years ago, did a two-page color spread on her because they want to know what's happened to you. Now, where and what could you do with a two-page color spread? Who knows? What could you do? What's that? Promote yourself. Absolutely. What's that? called people in the news uh, typically or in the news or uh, news briefs it, it's called one of those sections okay so that's that's really this is a great and powerful strategy completely free and usable every time and I'd like to just if I might take a few moments and uh, what I do call Jill and friends and just work with one or two of you who would like to shall we say volunteer to actually work through the problem today and your script so that other people get your message would anyone like to try it whoop I saw thank you Paul stand on up and I'm gonna welcome you to Jill and friends you're on the air and I'm Jill and you're the friend yes. <laughs> okay so to be here. thank you so Paul what is the problem today one of the problems today is as computers become more and more prominent in everybody's home, the technology has advanced way beyond people's ability to actually know what the, how to use them effectively right. and safely. So what are three things that we, they, could do in five-year-old language, could do to, to get more technical and make technology work for them? What could they do? Uh, there's a variety of free utilities that they can use on a regular basis to clean. Uh, sea cleaner is, is a great free utility. It'll just take out the trash. It doesn't decide what the trash is, but it, it cleans it up on a regular basis. Excellent. Before we go on, do you notice also I wanted him to get specific to give you real things you could do immediately. Does that make sense? So always give away, give away your secrets. Give away your secrets. What else? Then it's not a secret. No. Well, but, but you know what? I want you to give away things you would normally be paid for. Why? Because people want value and benefit. That's the truth. They want to know what it is that you're offering. Okay? What else? Uh, and a, a good antivirus program that uh, you have running that you confirm is working. Uh, there are free ones like Avast, A-V-A-S-T, is a good free one. Uh, space or time on your computer and doesn't get in the way. 
Excellent. So you notice, again, he's giving you free resources, things you can do, things you can use. So that's wonderful. And what else? One more? Um, backup. Make sure you have a backup and you know what to do if you've lost a file. So many people think they're backed up. I was sure it was working, and they've never tested it. So. Thank you, Paul. Give him a hand. All right, that was good. That was really good. Woohoo! <laughs> you got it recorded on video, just in case he forgets. Because, you know, having a script means you've got three main points that you're making right away and always, and uh, it keeps it simple. Anyone else want to try it with me? Lynette, are you volunteering? All right. Come on, stand on up. I know you could do this. So welcome to Jill and Friends. You're on the air. Thank you, Jill. The problem today is getting caregivers and nurses that are qualified to care for your loved ones at home. So the problem today, I, I might actually scare people a little more, to be honest. Like how much, uh, whether it's abuse or lack of care, is there? Because, you know, we've seen the stories. You've seen those stories on CNN where that, like, the, who, you remember that story with the older man who was uh, left alone by his caregiver? It was all over. The video got major distribution. I mean, I saw it on CNN. So I'm thinking we scare people a little bit because our loved ones, we want them well taken care of, don't we? So I would start with, you know, your loved ones. You want them well taken care of. And the problem today is that there's abuse by caregivers and the people who care for your loved ones to the extent of, and maybe find a statistic on it. Statistics really work, does that, does that help? Okay, so with that in mind, Lynette, tell us three things we can do, since you own a caregiving kind of uh, agency, three things we can do to ensure our caregivers are right and proper for our loved ones. Okay, well the first thing you wanna do is you want to choose an agency that uh, really screens their employees and does very thorough background checks to uh, check for any uh, previous history in crime or anything like that. Um, also that does drug testing to be sure that these people are not using drugs and um, so you want an agency that does that and that um, train, that do uh, have a good training program uh, for their employees. So you notice, so that was specific and focused and right to the point, right? Always want to do that. So for yourselves, just be looking at how can you do that, make your message specific, focused, and to the point. Thank you, Lynette. Give her a hand. Woohoo! Give her a hand. Anyone else want to try it over here in that side of the room? Anybody? Or over here, whoever would like to try it? Oh, come on, better me than Oprah. You know, that's what I like to say. Anyone? Peggy. How about Peggy? Would you like to be put on the spot, Peggy? <laughs> All right. <laughs> How about Toby? <laughs> okay, Bob, come on, stand on up. Oh, come on. Because we were talking at breakfast, and he you know, didn't quite know how to put apartment managers. So what is the problem today? With property management? The problem today is people own apartments or have uh, places to live and don't know how to keep them safe, right? Well, the biggest problem they have is the uh, tenants. Uh -huh. Right, so, <laughs> right. So the problem today is, no, seriously, <laughs> that's good. And by the way, I'm listening for what's great is the laughter in the room, right? Because then it gets people engaged. So tell me, Bob, what are three things I can do to avoid having uh, the tenant from hell? What can I do? Well, I think uh, key first is to, uh, the background check, so do a background and check. Uh, and, I, and make sure they are who they are. Okay. Uh, also, um, we uh, think it's important to check references. Yes, yeah, so check references. Where they previously lived and uh, how they operated sure. in their past, and um, we also. Uh, I can't think of three. Okay, so, but you've got, you've got the basic two, right? So do references, give background checks, and find out, make sure people are who they are. Give them a hand. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> Thank you so much. So I want to I want to leave you with uh, one other great resource called Pitch Rate, P-I-T-C-H-R-A-T-E. Pitch Rate allows you to get queries from reporters who are looking for people like you. 
So it's a great pitchrate.com, completely free. Go sign up and make sure to put yourselves in there so that you can create more visibility immediately. Also, um, some of you have asked how to work with me. There's a purple flyer. Take a look at that, my publicity crash course. If I may just take a moment to tell you about that. It's the big one that says the crash course in publicity. Everybody got one? It's in the middle of the table here, some of you. Let me just take a moment and share with you that I teach a one-day course that is like roll up the sleeves. We do four documents, like literally get it done, the tools you need to get more visibility in the marketplace. So you're going to actually leave with tools done. If you'd write two dates in there, one is August 6th. I'm going to be here in LA doing it again. And September 25th, could you write those dates on there? And here's the cool thing. Um, I know you see it says 997, and because I'm here and I'm coming back, I don't live here, but I'd like to make you a special offer. And that is for today, I'm giving you a 50% discount, which is amazing. And Adrian, I think you remember, I've never offered it at that price. No, I never did. So it's 497, 497. It's going to be here today where you can sign up and just let me know that you'd like to delight to have you August 6th or September 25th or any other date you would like to do. So I uh, invite you to come visit me at the table and support you with your publicity, your messaging. I hope that today has been valuable for you. And I want to leave you with a challenge. Are you ready for my challenge? Diane's like, I think. <laughs> my, my challenge to you is if you don't like the news, go out and make some of your own. Thank you, everybody.